information on human rights. And we're very pleased to be involved with uh, developing this sort of declaration on human rights because it comes at a very important time. It's written very much in the midst of Brexit um, about our, um, the worry that we all have actually that Brexit might threaten rights, whether in the short term or the longer term. Um, and it also comes in the midst of, as we know, quite often a questioning um, of human rights, are they important, why should we have them, and actually this is a clear statement um, from many saying uh, that they are important and we want to keep them at the heart of society. Basically we found there was four groups of people in Scotland in the basis of the research which was uh, looking at all of Scotland's population. A group who were very supportive of human rights, that was just over 40% of the population. A group who were disinterested in human rights, a group who were opposed to human rights and then a group who were conflicted about human rights. That group agreed with both positive and negative messages about human rights. What that tells us is there's a really strong degree of support for human rights in Scotland, but also that there's quite a lot we have to do to build on that support. But what was also really important about the research, it was it showed us the ways in which we could do that. The people who are either conflicted or aren't interested or indeed oppose human rights actually know very little about the subject matter. So one of the key things we can do um, as civil society organisations, as the Human Rights Commission, is really start to build people's understanding of what human rights really means. And the way to do that is through helping people understand about their economic and social rights, about the right to health, the right to housing, the right to an adequate standard of living. And those were the kind of messages that really people could identify with, could resonate with and found that was actually personal to their lives. We now obviously have the EU Withdrawal Bill. We, along with 20 other organisations, including SHRC, Liberty and Amnesty, uh, wrote a letter to government saying that we were sure that the Withdrawal Bill and the way that it's drafted does not protect the equality and human rights of our citizens. It does not. Um, and we must work, as I say, to, to try and get that improved. Um, we obviously uh, work at Westminster Arena, a GP organisation, and We've been doing amendments to the bill to try and get it um, improved. We've been trying to stop the idea that governments can pass regulation behind closed doors, that it gives itself delegated powers. We're trying to keep the Charter of Fundamental Rights um, that comes from the EU, which again gives a human rights underpinning to a lot of the, the, the EU law that's now part of our legislation. And I know our, our sister NHRIs um, are with us in that fight. Um, we are looking at the possible introduction of a, a right to equality, which would mean that governments, Scottish and uh, UK, um, would have to look at the legislation they're passing and say this um, advances a right to equality in the same, the same way as you would say this legislation does not go back on human rights. Human rights are really important to me because I feel like it's really important that everyone in our society is treated equally. As soon as they're born, everyone is on the same footing and everyone has the same opportunities as each other uh, and that we have mechanisms so we can fight to make sure that that's the case. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the ongoing debate about Scotland and Britain's place in Europe has neglected the, the issue of rights and equality protections. So SCPO <coughs> want to see civil society use its collective voice, which is very, very powerful, um, to offer something more meaningful, Illum illuminate the debate, highlight the important issues, positive solutions. Civil society is good at doing this and ensuring that these matters are not only on the radar, but are treated with the seriousness with which they deserve to be treated. We cannot sit back and wait for the future because the future is here now. And Andrew's absolutely right. I've had people contact my office who are distraught, who have made their homes, their businesses, their lives, their whole world here in Scotland, created jobs, you know, pillars of their communities who have no idea what's going to happen to them in the next few months, no idea at all. And that's something that we can't allow to happen because 8% of the population in Edinburgh, if those 8% of people suddenly disappeared, where does it leave Edinburgh? Where does it leave Glasgow? Where does it leave our rural communities? And that's why a declaration like this is so, so important because it's, it's Civic Scotland, it's the third sector, it's the member organisations, it's the activists, it's the people you know, that you've got involved in, in your organisation, whether it's a volunteer, as a paid member of staff. But that's why it's so important that this is driven from that grassroots level up the way.
Human rights are important to me and many third sector organisations because they lay down the basic standards that people can expect to uh, live their lives by. Um, some of the most disadvantaged groups have benefited massively from uh, improvements in human rights but we should never take them for granted and we always have to make sure that the standards are upheld and progress uh, as the years go on. Without human rights, my community will not be able to fight for justice um, regarding UK government involvement in the 1984 genocide which took place at the Golden Temple in India. I personally um, have a, a strong passion for women's rights within the Sikh community and without human rights um, I would not have been able to fight against the sexist norms which exist within our um, culture. I, I ran away from persecution, I'm originally from Iraq, I'm a Kurdish minority. It's really pretty scary in a country where human rights is not respected. And being in a country like Scotland, world leader in human rights is so important. Sometimes you don't appreciate your rights until it's gone. So I have seen when your rights is not there, so how important to have human rights have the right for freedom of expression, have the right of assembly. We want to change society for better. We want to create a society where there is no detention, where human rights is respected. Um, so really immigration is, um, is really important to me, immigration laws, and what future can we bring through the Declaration on Human Rights. An Egyptian traveler culture in terms of where they are in, in human rights. When the rights are being violated, they don't speak up because they think it will draw attention to themselves. When they're being told to move from the place they're entitled to stay in, they don't kick up a fuss, they just move. They need encouragement to say it will be all right to flag up when your rights are being violated. It's all right to draw attention to yourself. It's all right to campaign and it's all right to allow other people to do so. The Scotland Declaration on Human Rights is poverty that hangs its feet in all that the good slave we pass him by we don't be Shall be.